Hello, welcome to the Narrow Ways Christ for All Nations. This is Hosanna David. Welcome to today's message. It's my prayer that as we abide in the presence of God today, the Lord God Almighty will see us through. We want to continue from our series that we've been following for this is the fourth week. Last week, the Lord gave me a revelation which I delivered the message. Um, this is a message I supposed to give last week, but uh, that revelation came and it is specifically for those who have issues, issues of spiritual possession. So today I want to talk about why some Christians have not been anointed and the reason is uncleanness. And in this case, today, we're going to focus on spiritual uncleanness, which is, and we will narrow it down to spiritual possession. Before we begin the message, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer all the time. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your care. We are most grateful to you, Jesus. Thank you for everything you were doing for us. Lord, we want to hear from you. We ask that your power will speak to us. May your grace and your glory be revealed through our lives. Wherever we are, let us shine your light. Supply enough grace to enable us run this race and finish well and earn a welcome from you on the last day in the name of jesus christ father i am an empty vessel please speak through me i have no word of my own and as many who are concerned lord we pray that your grace your hand of grace will touch your hearts so that they can turn to you with a heart of repentance in jesus christ's name we pray amen before we move on please subscribe to this channel hosanna e -E and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you can receive updates whenever we post any video. We are talking about your body and the Holy Spirit. Uh, we talked about why some Christians are not yet anointed and we mentioned uncleanness. And the next, this week, the next and the other one, I'll be talking about this uncleanness because this is a very serious issue. Uncleanness is a very serious issue in our time. Um, a lot of Christians may tend to shy away from it, but we can't shy away from this matter of uncleanness. It is very, very common. A lot of times, people really sincerely want the Holy Spirit to come upon them. They want the anointing of the Holy Ghost, but it doesn't happen. Recently, uh, it's about two months ago, two or three months ago, an elderly woman reached me. This is somewhat I know specifically that she is possessed with the spirit of witchcraft. So she reached me and she said, Oh, Pastor, please help me pray. I need to receive the Holy Spirit. This person I'm talking about is going close to 80 years. I need to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Please pray. They said I should read books. I've been reading books. Oh, they said I should attend church. I sh I'm attending church services. They said I should be reading my Bible and be praying. I am doing all that. Yet, I am yet to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I don't actually have much to say to that person. Because she knows the problem. There was a time she told me some things and I had to open up to her. I had to tell her. But she wasn't even, this is someone that wasn't even care about her salvation. But she needs the gift of the Holy Spirit. We shouldn't deceive ourselves. We can't serve two masters. You either serve one and leave the other or you, you must choose one. You can be here and there at the same time. You have to choose one kingdom. There are two opposing kingdoms. The 
kingdom of God and the kingdom of the devil. If you are for God, then you must let the other kingdom, the other kingdom's powers go. But a lot of people don't want to let the powers go. They are in the church, yet they still operate in the other kingdom. Uncleanness. And we're talking about spiritual possession. Let's look at this passage. First Samuel 16, 13, and 14. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him that him here is David in the midst of his brethren. And the, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. This was exactly what happened when Saul was anointed. As a matter of fact, he prophesied and they were saying, Oh, is Saul among the prophets? No, he wasn't among the prophets. As a king, he was anointed. And one of the evidences of that anointing was the, the prophesying. That moment, he couldn't even exploit these gifts and make the best use of the spirit. This anointing that was released upon him. When David was anointed, what happened? The Bible says, as they poured, Samuel poured physical oil upon him. And what happened? The Spirit of God came upon him. He became anointed. Verse 14, but the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. An evil spirit troubled him right from that moment. He became possessed. I have been saying it several times that the human body doesn't remain empty. The human body was created to be inhabited by the Spirit of God. The word spirit in the Hebrew rendition is nichamor, which means breath, the Spirit of God. So God breathed upon man the breath of life and man became a living soul. And that breath is the spirit that man has today. God gave man his own life. And because man was created, the body was created to be inhabited by a spirit. If the spirit of God is not there to always fellowship with man, to leave man, the fallen angels, the demons in the world, who do not have permission to operate in this world, they need your body. They need, they are, they, they, they are beings without bodies. So they need a body to operate. They need your body. So if the Spirit of God is not in you, they come and strike a deal with you to need your body and, and operate through your body. This is a problem. As a matter of fact, it was a punishable offense in the Old Testament. For someone to harbor a familiar spirit. Today, people even use them to do magic and use familiar spirits to do entertainment. Some of the things you see are beyond, actually beyond magic. This is my phone. If you can levitate this phone from the ground, that is not a magical trick. A demon is responsible. If someone can read your mind, and tell you what you have in your mind. That is not a magical trick. That is pure uh, alignment. Uh, coming in alliance with a demonic spirit. So we have to be careful. A spirit. The first of all, the Holy Ghost came from God. And when the spirit of God departed from Saul, the body was empty. And it cannot remain empty because the human body can never be empty. There is a spirit living inside of you, whether you like it or not. See that you have the Holy Spirit or you have the unholy spirit. There are no two ways about it. It is written here that an evil spirit from the Lord 
troubled him. Uh, it's not that God sent an evil, there's no evil spirit in heaven that is sent from heaven. It is only the Holy Spirit that is in heaven. There is no unholy spirit, there is no evil spirit in heaven. What this passage is saying is that just as God anointed Saul, so also God permitted an evil spirit. It is permission. God permitted an evil spirit to trouble Saul. This is a very serious issue. And if you read Deuteronomy chapter 18, 10 to 14, let's read. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a shaman, or a consulter, with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out, that means the Canaanites, from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. And for these, for these nations, which thou shalt possess, hearken unto observers of times, and unto, divina, unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God had not suffered thee so to do. So this passage is saying, listen, there shall not be one of you who is who observes times. You don't need to be a diviner. Neither must you consult them. As a matter of fact, in Leviticus chapter uh, 20, verse 27 says, A man also, or a woman, shall not have a familiar spirit. All that is a wizard shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones. Their blood shall be upon them. That someone, a man or woman, that had a familiar spirit. So, if someone is possessed in the Old Testament, the command of the Lord was stone them to death. And you are not guilty of murder. In Africa, some years ago, which is, we are killed. People who were possessed were killed. But unfortunately today, those who are possessed have churches. <laughs> Many of those you see on Facebook, on YouTube, prophesying, see your face, a prophesy, some of them actually tell you the truth. But with what spirit? Familiar spirit. Yesterday I was telling a woman that anyone who says, I see your face, I prophesy, and they really prophesy, it is either they are lying or they have familiar spirits or they have some tricks. The Holy Spirit doesn't work like that. The Holy Spirit chooses what you see. You can't see beyond what the Holy Spirit gives you access, access to see. Today, there are lots of wizards and witches who are prophets, who are prophets. They are prophesying. They use familiar spirits. And it's not that they don't say the truth. A lot of the things they say are actually true. They could tell you things that are really true. But the question is, with what spirit? Read um, Acts of Apostles chapter 16, verse 16 following. There was a lady who was possessed. There was a slave girl who was possessed. And she was following Paul and Silas about. Oh, these are the true men of God. She wasn't lying. Truly, 
they were the true servants of God. She was saying, they are preaching the gospel to us. They are preaching the good news to us. Yes, to us. But did you receive it? No, she just wanted to identify with those with the power of God. And she did that for a while before Paul was vexed and said, no, I have to put a stop to this. Paul cast the spirit out. And the masters, the, the masters of this slave girl discovered that, oh, the source of our income is gone. They had to persecute Paul and Silas and put them in prison. Today, if someone has an, uh, a, a familiar spirit, what they do is, oh, this is a gift. They go and set up a ministry and start prophesying. I'm not saying that the power of God cannot open people's eyes uh, instantly and you start seeing things and telling people. It works like that, but not all the time. You can't have 100 people. You can't say the first 100 people I want to prophesy to you. It doesn't work like that. Meanwhile, some of the things people say are actually prophecies. They are not prophecies. They are prayers. You are praying the prayer of faith for someone. Don't say you are prophesying. If you are prophesying, you must be moved by the Holy Spirit to speak the things you have either seen and you declaring them, or the Holy Spirit is has taken taken over your your mouth, your tongue, and your ability to think. You don't premeditate when you're prophesying. You just say these things. You just start saying them. It could be in another language. And you're just saying them. Or, he says, speak these things into existence. So you are seeing these things in a vision and you are speaking them. You can't say you want to pray for people. Can I prophesy to you? And sometimes some people reach me and they say, man of God, prophesy into my life. That's not prophecy. If you say, make declaration into my life, fine. And a lot of people sometimes they meet me and say, Oh man of God, I got a prophecy last year. A man of God prophesied into my life that I will be married. I, I, I'm not married. That was last year. No man even approached me. And as a matter of fact, the relationship I had scattered. Oh, you never received a prophecy. Because if it were to be a prophecy, it would have come to pass. I see your face, I prophesy, it's a lie. That is the truth. I was born and raised in Christ Apostolic Church. I received the Holy Ghost baptism 2005. That was the first time I spoke in tongues. That was the first time the Lord spoke through my mouth. And he spelled out my ministry to me. I was hearing myself. But I couldn't premeditate before I started saying those things. At first, he was questioning me. What have you suffered? What have you passed through? Why are you crying? He questioned me. Even my mom came around. And she was hearing everything I was saying. Even the day I had accident. I was prophesying on the hospital bed. I think that was the following day. Was it that day or the following day? I was prophesying. People were asking me questions. And I was talking to them. There are other times. Whereby you have an issue in your head. And you're asking God. God, please reveal this to me. And the Holy Spirit will be telling you things you were not praying about. You could be praying about John, and he could be telling you about James. And you are not even thinking about James. You're not even thinking about uh, uh, praying for James. You are praying for John. And you're asking the Lord, Lord, John needs to hear from you. What are you saying about this case? Lord, please speak to me. And you are quiet, listening. You want to hear about John. You want to get instruction so that you can get back to John. But the Holy Spirit could choose not to speak to you about John, but he will be talking to you about James or about 
Get it? This is how it has been to me. Sometimes a person could be saying, Man of God, this is my problem. Before you pray, he starts speaking to you. But not all the time. So for those of you who say, I see your face, I prophesy, it is either you are a false prophet, or you are a liar, or you are using a familiar spirit. You can't always see the faces of first 100 people and you will always have prophecy for them. It is never like that. There are times God could hide some information. But for diviners, they will always consult different spirits and different powers. As a matter of fact, when you go to some churches and they tell you, sow a seed, and you sow a seed, they take that seed to their kingdom. A lady that was possessed with witchcraft and marrying demons told me that there are times pastors could bring some things. They, when, they, when they sow seed, they buy gifts, they buy some things for rituals and they take them to their kingdoms that oh this person has come to us this man needs children this woman needs a job and they register your case in the kingdom of darkness but they will always need your consent the consent could be the seed you are sowing they, all, they will always need a consent from you. And it is that consent that grants them the, the astral right, the legal right, to even get your information. If you are entering some of these churches, they tell you to remove your shoes. They need your consent. They also want... a. Uh, uh, of the, they want to activate the spiritual feature of free flow of information. When you go to the house of a witch doctor, you see them in films. When you go to their houses, they will tell you to remove your shoes. They need your consent. Please let us be wise. The penalty for being possessed was to be stoned to death was death i mean today even some people brag with their evil spirits we have to know that the days are evil if you have been caught young if the devil caught you young at a very young age for instance, there are children who were initiated even with breast milk. So they grew up to discover that, oh, um, every night I am taken to that place, that kingdom, and this is, these are activities. It is not because it is normal. It is not normal. There is a lie that is being propagated by satanic agents, and that lie is that everybody is born a witch. That is a lie. Let me read this passage. Psalm 11 verse 3. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? This is exactly what the devil does. He destroys the foundation. He puts his spirit in man at a very young age. And when you come to receive the Lord, you'll be struggling. You struggle, struggle, if the spirit is not cast out. A lot of people pray and fast. They want to receive the Holy Spirit. But there is a demon inside. It may be pronounced. It may not be pronounced. But a lot of people don't even want to let these demons go. The foundations are already destroyed. In the Old Testament... Those who had familiar spirits, some of them were expelled. Others were stoned to death. Others were killed. 
In the time of Saul, he expelled many of them. And there was a witch in Andor. Before his death, he had to go and consult that woman. Let me tell you, do you know that there are many people today who are supposed to be witch doctors? I mean, witch doctors. But unfortunately, they are not operating in the shrines. They are operating in the church. Sometimes I see some people when they introduce themselves as I am prophet, so, 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 or I am prophetess, so, so, so. I tell myself, but God, you are saying too many things. Known wishes and known wizards are claiming to be prophets too. But are they not getting customers? They get. Why not? <laughs> because we have a bunch of religious people who say they are Christians. Who don't care about holiness. They don't care about the standard of the faith they claim to practice. So they choose to go to the prophets that could tell them, solutions to their problems but they but care nothing about how they live their lives i know there are people there are times some people could meet me and say oh man of god have me pray about this thing and then when i mention their cases before god god will say don't ever mention the name of this person stay away this is not my child this person has resolved to live their lives doing evil don't mention their cases to me I've seen situations like that. But when you go before a false prophet, when you go before a sorcerer, when you go before someone who is not of God, they will tell you all the good things in the world. Mind you, I'm not saying that some of them don't actually preach holiness. Why not? Some of them, they preach real holiness messages. And except the Lord opens your eyes, you will never know that they belong to the kingdom of darkness. Or maybe until you offend them and they come after you, you will never know. Let us be wise. Are you consulting familiar spirits through the name of prophets or prophetess? You have prayer houses, solution houses everywhere today. But hardly you hear the truth from their pulpits. A lot of people have been led astray and they don't care. They need solution. They need miracles. But the miracles you're taking to the fire of hell, the miracles you're taking to the lake of fire. If you need the Holy Spirit, let the uncleanness go. There is power in Christ to set you free. There is so much power in Christianity that can set you free. The blood of Jesus can purify you. The blood of Jesus can wash you and you will be clean. All you just need to do is give your life to Jesus Christ. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, also let the demons go. A lot of people don't. I, I have done baptismal classes for uh, many years. And I will teach them about repentance. I will talk about salvation. I will talk about spiritual possession. And some of them, the Holy Spirit could tell me, this person is a witch. This one is possessed. This one is this. This one is this. But when I call them and try to counsel them and talk to them, about the spirit in them that now you want to get baptized you need to let the spirit go majority of them will tell you they know nothing about that spirit but is the word of god a lie listen this is what the bible says acts for Apostles chapter 1 verse 8 but you shall receive power after the holy ghost is come upon you when you repent the holy ghost comes upon you why is it that it hasn't come upon you? What is the problem? Haven't you asked yourself, what is the problem? Is the word of God a lie? The Lord says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. 
Why hasn't the Holy Spirit come upon you? That is a question. Something is wrong. Why are you not anointed yet? Why are you not anointed? What is the problem? If you seek God with all your heart, you will find Him. He said, I will be found by you. If you seek me with all your heart. Why is it that you are seeking God and it's like you can't find Him? Why? Give your life to Jesus Christ. Confess everything to Him. And let Him be the Lord of your life. Also the Lord of your spirit. The Lord of your body. And the Lord of your soul. You can't say He is your Lord. And the spirit that controls you is another spirit entirely. It doesn't work like that. Genuineness is what the Lord seeks. The Lord seeks genuineness of heart. Blessed are those who thirst and hunger for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Why are you not yet filled? Even with the Holy Spirit. Do you know that just accepting Jesus Christ into your heart and confessing your sins, just repenting, even without baptism, do you know that the Holy Spirit could come upon you? And you could start speaking in tongues. Why is it that you fasted, you've prayed, you've done, um, you've, you've, you've read many books, you've tried the best you can, yet the Holy Spirit hasn't come upon you? Ask yourself this question. Please, if you have not watched the other videos, try to watch. Especially the one of last week. It is a warning. There are other revelations that the Lord has given to me too. Try to watch them. Even on our website, Ego Layopuna, Global Outreach. Let us pray. Lord, help your people. There are some who are ashamed, take away their shame, so that they can sincerely seek you without shame. In hell, there will be no shame. In heaven, those who confess their sins and repented genuinely will not face any shame because there will be no record of evil against them. But those who make it to hell successfully, their records will be there in the book of death permanently. Lord, please help us. Savior, please help us. King of kings, a lot of laws, please help us. Help your church. Help your people. Help your church. Lord, help us. There is too much uncleanness, too much unclean spirits everywhere, even in the bodies of many who say they are Christians. Lord, help your people. Soften the hearts of these people. Let them come out. Many people don't know how hot hell is. That is why some of them can blaspheme the holy name of the Lord and speak by the power of evil spirit, the power of demons. And yet says, they say, proclaim your name and say, thus says the Lord. That's blasphemy. You can speak by the power and the inspiration of an unclean spirit and you claim it is a Holy Spirit. It's blasphemy. Lord, have mercy upon them. Give these people one more chance to repent. Lord, there are lots of people who really love you. 
some have cried asking you to deliver them lord please deliver them help your children lord release enough grace and save your people from the hands of the wicked ones as many who will hear this message as many who are listening to me right now lord those whose hearts are open to you we ask that your spirit will minister to them all set your people free oh lord god thank you for hearing our prayer lord i pray for as many who have been supporting this ministry that you will bless them abundantly open the windows of heaven and pour your blessings upon their lives in jesus christ's name we pray amen please if you are not subscribed try and subscribe to this channel and again those of you who want to give you can visit our website tnwcfen.org or you can see our account details on the screen we have a u.s bank account now so for those of you who are in the u.s feel very free to support us you can use the account on in the screen or in the description box of this video we really need your support and whatsoever thing we get we also we use to fund the ministry and not just that too and also fund our charity organization in which we have over 70 children we have aged people we do empowerment programs we have some uh, physical as a matter of fact we're running uh, uh, rehabilitation for people with over 20 cases physical rehabilitation people who are who have different kinds of deformities their hands their legs their waist uh, and it is totally free of charge we, we are able to do that because of you who are supporting us if you want to get more details on that you can visit our website uh, Usana David Foundation website hgfng.org Please subscribe to this channel, Hosanna E. E. David. You can visit my website, hosannadevi.com. We also beg you to share our videos. Please share these videos, send them to your loved ones, and let them watch these videos. It will make impacts in their lives. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.